welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, as you guys can see by the title, we are going to be talking about how to pick a new tortoise and pretty much everything that that entails. I'm excited to film this video for you guys today because I have wanted to film this for so long. I'm really hoping that this video can serve as like an all-inclusive guide on how you can go about choosing what type of tortoise would be best to bring into your life. If you guys enjoyed this video, feel free to subscribe down below and also hit the notification bell so you guys don't miss any future videos on tortoises or anything else that I talk about on my channel. So for this video, we're gonna talk about everything that you should consider when considering getting a tortoise. That's gonna be everything from housing, sex, size, species, care differences, sensitivities, you name it. I'm also gonna go into different types of species as well as show you guys pictures and clips of them so you have an idea of what I'm describing and what I'm talking about. Now, it goes without saying that tortoises are huge responsibilities. I in no way should perform encouraging anyone to go out and buy a tortoise. It is not like a cat, a dog, or a fish. They do live a very, very long time. Depending on the type of species, whether you hibernate, how good of a care that you provide them, they can live anywhere between 30 and 150 years, depending on the species and type of tortoise. So they are a huge commitment. Please know that before deciding to get one. But I am glad that you're here. I'm glad that you found this video. We're gonna go over all of this together, so stay tuned. Okay, so you want a tortoise. You are considering getting a tortoise and bringing it into your home as a pet. You've done some basic research. You know that you want one. You understand that they live a really long time and that they are a lifelong commitment and beyond, meaning you've thought about who will take them after you pass away and things like that. I get asked that all the time. And lots of people who own tortoises will either leave them to sanctuaries or will them to relatives whenever they pass on. So it is doable, but it is also something that you must think about when considering what type of species of tortoise you're going to get, but we will get into all of that further. So you've thought about their lifespan, you've thought about their care, and you know that it's a commitment that you want to make, but now you want to know what type of tortoise species you should get and you're not sure. So I would say the first question that you should ask yourself is how much space do you have for the tortoise? For instance, are you planning on keeping your tortoise outdoors or are you considering keeping your tortoise indoors? If so, is it gonna be half and half? If it's gonna be mostly indoors, do you have enough room indoors to build a very large enclosure? Do you have enough funds to afford to build the size enclosure they would need, whether it's outdoors or indoors? All of those questions will determine what type of species you should get. To give you guys an example of the two polar opposites on that spectrum would be a sulcata tortoise. If you have a huge fenced in backyard that has maybe like a concrete barrier around it because sulcatas do love to dig, then maybe you're considering a large tortoise. Obviously, if you live in a really cold climate, that's something that you'll have to consider because keeping it outside may not be feasible. Do you live in an apartment where you don't have a yard? Again, that's something that you would have to consider. It's really important to keep large tortoise species outside and all tortoise species, whether they're big or small, do benefit from UVA and UVB. So whether you have a bulb inside or whether it's the natural sunlight, it is really important to remember that. So if you don't have a huge yard with a fence and then also have a barrier at the bottom of the fence so the sulcata can't escape and things like that. So we would look at the other spectrum of maybe like a smaller Mediterranean species like, like an Egyptian tortoise, a Herman's tortoise, a Russian tortoise, marginated tortoises. Lots of other species do stay on the smaller end and don't get as big as sulcatas but also make sure to give them lots of outside time as well. While these smaller species can live perfectly happy lives indoors, it is important to always make sure to take them outside and give them sunlight, but at least they don't require as much outdoor space as say a sulcata would. So let's say that you have plenty of room and you can have a big tortoise, a small tortoise, or a medium tortoise, and that's not a problem for you. So the next question I would ask myself is, what size tortoise are you wanting? Are you wanting a medium sized tortoise or a really small tortoise? Let's say that you're wanting a small to medium sized tortoise, a tortoise that gets anywhere between six inches to 15 inches. There are lots of different tortoise species that do great indoors that don't exceed around 15 to 16 inches. Some of those types of species are Russians, Egyptians, Hermans, Indian stars, and also Burmese stars. Now obviously Mediterranean species do tend to stay on the smaller size, usually under 12 inches. However, there are some important things to consider whenever you are choosing the species. One important thing to remember whenever you are choosing what type of species of tortoise that you want is that females will always be larger. So let's say that you want a Herman's tortoise, light blue. The average size for a male Eastern Herman's tortoise, light blue, is usually anywhere between five to seven inches. Blue is currently five inches and he is three years old. However, tortoises do grow very slowly and they don't fully reach their mature size until they're around five years old. So blue could have a little bit more growing to do and that's perfectly fine. 
but the odds of him exceeding seven inches is very slim. However, if he were a female Eastern Hermit's tortoise, he could actually reach eight to 10 inches in length. It is a little bit more uncommon, but it is possible and it's definitely something that you need to consider. Now, if you are getting a hatchling tortoise, another thing to remember is that while they're babies, you cannot technically sex them. So that's something to remember. If you do happen to get a hatchling tortoise from a breeder, you will not know the sex of it until it is mature. Now, I'm not gonna go in too much on sexing tortoises, but the main defining feature is always the tail. Males will always have a much longer and thicker tail. Females will always be a lot shorter and skinnier. Now, obviously, I'm sure there are some exceptions to sexing turtles and tortoises. However, that is pretty much the general rule, especially with Mediterranean tortoises. So once you know what your budget is for their enclosure and their care, what you can afford, how big of a yard you have, indoors versus outdoors, whether you want a male or a female, then you can start doing more research on the tortoise species depending on the size of tortoise that you prefer. I find that that's a really, really good and easy way to narrow down what tortoise would be best for you. Another important thing that I do wanna point out is that it is my opinion that if you are new to tortoises and you're a beginner, I do suggest only getting one tortoise. If you get two tortoises as hatchlings and you can't guarantee the sex of those tortoises, they may grow up to be very incompatible and can actually fight. And that is a huge problem that happens to a lot of people who get multiple tortoises as hatchlings, not knowing what sex they are. For instance, if you end up with a male and a female, that male will actually chase the female around and harass her, trying to breed constantly, and it can really stress her out and even cause her to stop eating and have a lot of other issues. If you end up with two males, which was actually the situation with Blue, his previous owner had three males, they actually will start fighting and they can actually bite each other, injure each other, and actually take their tails off. So every enclosure that you have should be for only one species at a time and preferably only one tortoise at a time. So like I mentioned with hatchlings, you won't know the sex of them. However, if you do go on things like Craigslist or adoption ads or the turtle room, you may be able to find a tortoise that's up for adoption or rescue and that's needing a home. And that would be a great way to be able to choose the sex of your tortoise. So the general tortoise sizing rule is one foot per one inch of tortoise. So if you have a three inch tortoise, they need an enclosure that was at least three feet long. Blue is five inches, so his current enclosure is five feet long. So if you were to go on Craigslist and find a tortoise that was say four years old and it was almost full grown and it's around seven inches, then you would need your enclosures to be about seven feet long. Another thing that's really important to consider when choosing a species of tortoise is their overall care. Now while the majority of tortoises do have very similar care, there are some differences between the species that you really need to be aware of. There are some species like Russians, Egyptians, and Western Hermans that can be more susceptible to things like respiratory infections if they are in too humid of climates. So that's definitely something to make sure that you research very carefully and you know before you get one. As with any animal, there are some species of tortoises that are more hardy than others. Russian tortoises are pretty hardy, but they don't do well in high humidity. Eastern Hermans tortoises like blue are also pretty hardy. However, their subspecies relatives, the Western Hermans tortoises are notorious for not being quite as hardy. And then there are more sensitive species that are not technically a beginner tortoise like Egyptian tortoises, which are one of my personal favorites, and they are not as hardy as a Russian or a Hermans. In fact, most people who own Egyptian tortoises keep them indoors strictly because they are very sensitive to high humidity. So again, that is definitely something that you wanna research and keep in mind, especially if you are a beginner and you've never had a tortoise before. A tortoise like an Egyptian may be really small and cute, but because they are so sensitive, it may not be the best tortoise for you. Same goes for Westerns. Maybe you love Herman's tortoises and you would love to have a Western because they're smaller and they're brighter in color and kind of look like little bumblebees, but because they are very sensitive they're technically not really a beginner turtle. The same goes for other smaller species like the Egyptian tortoise, the Western Hermans tortoise, and the Indian star tortoise. All beautiful smaller species of tortoises. However, they are known to be more sensitive to things like humidity and environment. But if you are interested in any of those tortoises but you're nervous about owning one because you're a beginner, you can look at Eastern Hermans tortoises which are very similar to the Westerns. They're just a little bit bigger and a little bit more drab in color but still beautiful. You can look at Burmese star tortoises if you love Indian star tortoises but you're scared to own one. Burmese star tortoises are also really, really beautiful, but they do get quite a bit bigger than the Indian stars, but they still have that beautiful pattern shell. If you're a beginner, those are just some of my suggestions on some species that you can own that may be a little bit hardier and not quite so sensitive. Now, obviously, I am not a tortoise professional in any way, shape, or form. I'm 
tortoise lover who loves them more than anything. I have done years of research. It's just something that I have a passion for. It's just a really fun hobby that I have. And I love tortoises very much. And all of this is just my opinion and my advice to someone who is looking to get a tortoise. However, there are a lot of people who are much more experienced than me and give a lot of great advice particularly Chris Leone from Garden State Tortoise. I will have his website linked in the description down below. Chris Leone is the owner of Garden State Tortoise. He's also a huge tortoise breeder in the US. It's kind of a dream to meet him, like he's amazing. And you guys know if I ever get the chance to get my Egyptian tortoise, it is coming from Garden State. It's like one of my dreams, one of my goals. I just love his channel, his facility, his Instagram page, and his work. It's, it's unbelievable. So if you guys would like more information on how to care for different tortoise species, you would like to dig in deeper on maybe Herman's tortoises or Mediterranean tortoises in general, I will leave a link in the description down below that you guys can go and do a lot more research. His website is amazing. He gives a lot of in-depth and very detail information on lots of different species and subspecies. I definitely highly recommend checking that website out if you need any more information or you have any more questions about different types of species specifically. Yeah, so that is it for this video. I really hope that you guys found this video helpful. I think I covered everything that I wanted to. Honestly, when you're choosing a tortoise, it really just comes down to how experienced are you? What is your budget? How much space do you have outdoors versus indoors? Where you're gonna get the tortoise from, which will also help you know whether you're gonna get a male or a female, what age it will be, which will give you an idea of how big it will get, which will tell you how big of an enclosure you'll need for it while it's an adult. And then of course, if you're a beginner, making sure that you don't get a tortoise that is too advanced, but maybe getting one that's a little more hardier for you. All good things to consider when getting a tortoise. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you guys next time. Be kind, bye.